Greetings, Game Crafters. Welcome to Campaign Terrain. I'm your host, Cross. Today, we're going to be working on stage one of building this hovel house. We're going to start with a milk carton, We're going to, and we're going to end up with this, with the frame and carcass of the house basically completed. So, stick around after the jump, and we'll get right into it. Thanks for coming to Campaign Terrain. Jumping right into it, we're going to strip down a milk carton to use for the base of the uh, houses. Each milk carton will yield two houses. Uh, they start off like this. This is a half gallon. We've got the little plastic tap on the top that needs to come off. We've got the strip here that needs to come off. We're going to strip this down really easily. Let me just jump into it. First, get your fingers out of the way. We're going to take this plastic nib off. Now all it takes is a razor knife and just follow the contour of the carton itself. And you can keep that for other builds if you want to, or you can uh, discard it. If you do, please recycle. Sometimes there's a little piece that sticks up right here. That's all I'm taking off right now. It is possible to use the scissors for all of this, but I find that the knife is much quicker. I'm already done with that and we're ready to go. You gotta take this entire strip off of here. That's gonna leave this top part open, which is good. That's what we want. That piece can be discarded. That's going to leave you a square. Now we got to take care of the bottom. Come across. Now you have a flat piece of cardboard that you can use to make two of the houses. Now the next thing we need to watch out watch out for is this coating is very waxy and the paint doesn't like to stick to it. So let me close this real quick for safety reasons there. We're going to take something to sand it with. You can use a sanding stick, you can use sandpaper. I like these sanding uh, sponges. Here in America, they're a dollar for at the Dollar Tree for one. It's got two different uh, sizes of grit. There's a heavier side on one side and a smoother side on the other. I like to go for the heavier grit and give this surface what's called tooth so that the paint will grab hold. Okay, that's ready. Now, you have a problem. That creates a lot of dust. It's pretty heavy, it stays down, but it does get into your um, sanding block and it's on the surface and you wanna get rid of it. Now, that's bad for your lungs, so what you're gonna to wanna to do now, you don't necessarily need to do it if you're sanding out in front of you like I was doing just there, but now you wanna put on a respirator or some other kind of breather. Now this is COVID time, so you should have a breather laying around. Okay, that's everything dusted off. That should be the only part you really need this for until we get to making the chimney in a few minutes. All right, now you wanna measure your your uh, cardboard square that you've got here and you wanna cut across it, not down any of these seams. You wanna cut across it. So you wanna measure it. This one looks like it's nine and three quarters. I can tell that based on the sizes on my, on my cutting board here. Just to make sure, I'm gonna line this one end up. It seems to be smoother. I'm going to take this other end and put it right across the nine and three quarter mark just because that's the closest quarter inch. You can do it however you want depending on the measurements in your country. Okay, now we have two clean edges and we want to take the halfway mark. Half of nine and three quarters is, hold on, let me do math, four and seven eighths? Yeah, four and seven eighths. may take more than one pass to get these off of here. That's it. Now, you want to take the one that was the top. It's already got these folds right here, and you're going to emulate those folds on the other one. So you want to take that, line it up on one edge, and make a mark to match that. And then on the other edge, a mark to match that. You'll see why in just a moment. On both of these, you want to cut from that line out. So now these are square, so they'll line up. You just take the knife and put it here and draw through both layers. Make sure you get all the way through. Fold it the other way. And still using the shorter piece, that's the top part. Put the blade right in at that line. 
you're going to want to score right along those, so those need to be really sharply done. Put your straight edge there. Press two of those, the opposite two. And those will become the supports for your eventual roof. Now that those are there, you want to fold them the other direction. And I like to press mine in, but you don't have to. Press it down if you want to. Now those are the two halves of your roof. Now, let me show you on one of the prototypes. The reason we're going for such a, a low shape on the roof is twofold. One, it's really easy using this, it's already that size. And two, I like to have my roofs where they're at an angle where you can fit a miniature on top if someone climbs on top of the roof, your mini's not gonna fall off. So we're gonna keep that roof line. So we wanna take those two halves of the roof and masking tape. Okay, once you got your masking tape started, you just want a little strip, a little bit shorter than that piece across. You want to go ahead and put that on one of the flaps. And then from the bottom, you want to support the other flap while you tape that on. You want to get those to be even here on the sides. So those are now taped together, press that into place. That's going to be your roof. Now that leaves you this line here. So what we do now is we take the knife, and we cut right along both of those lines and it will take this flap off. You can discard this, you can use it for another project, you can recycle it, whatever you want to do with this. This is not needed for the build. And that's both of your gables, that's the part that's the end of the roof, that triangular shaped piece. So again, some more masking tape and you're going to want to tape all four of those gable, uh, gable lines into place. There's one side. You do want these pretty snug up against here. Next, you want to take your hot glue and you want to run it down the inside of all three of those seams. The one across and then both of the gables. see that I've glued in all of the seams and we're gonna let that cool for a minute and I'll be right back all right those are almost cooled off I took the time to make a second one so let me show you the measurements for the roof the roof is gonna be two and a half inches top to bottom and four and a half inches excuse me four and a quarter inches across the way that I got that size is I left a half inch overhang at the bottom, it's actually gonna be a little bit short by the time we trim it and put it on, but you'll see in a minute. And I left a quarter inch on either side. Um, the That's just arbitrary, it's just the way I picked it. It's just the one that I thought looked good. So you can go a little bit wider if you want. You go a little bit narrower. You can go wider if you want. I wouldn't go any narrower than four and a quarter on the so width because you're, you won't have any overhang. Your roof will stop right at the edge of the house. Put that off the side, take two of those. Now these are out of the Dollar Tree foam board that everybody in the United States knows about. Most of the builders in other countries do. I, I'm i pretty sure this would work with other brands from other countries, but you will have to take the paper off. There are all sorts of different places where people talk about how to do that. Luckily, I have the one where it just peels off, and so I'm sorry if you live in a country that doesn't, but that's what we're going to do right here. We're going to peel these off. Now, this is going to create a lot of static, so if these stick to me, it's going to be funny. So... I'm going to take all four sheets off. Two pieces of peeled foam core. Now, when these go together at the top, they're not going to quite match up right. They, we will be putting a piece of trim over that to cover it later, but just to go ahead and take care of that, I trim these off a little. And all I do to do that is I take a blade and I follow this edge on the top piece, whatever I decide is, whichever side I decide is the top, I follow that edge and I cut under at just a few degrees, like not quite 45 degrees, 30 degrees or so. And, but I want to make really certain to keep this edge straight. So, just like that, take that piece, again, recycle if you can. And that's our two roofs cut at however many degrees we think it'll need to at least be wide enough 
to fit on the or close enough to fit on the roof. All right, now let's talk about making the shingles. The more lines you make across, the more shingles you're going to have to individually do by hand. So I do have one prototype here where I made six rows of shingles, but that was more work than you really need to put into it. And I'm trying to make a bunch of these quickly. So I'm actually going to put four lines, well, three lines across, which will leave four rows of shingles. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. Now, again, these are two and a half inches across the top. So we're going to go one and a quarter inches in. Make yourselves a little mark on each end. And then roughly halfway through there, you can just eyeball that. So halfway up to the top, you want to line both sides. Halfway to the bottom, you want to line on both sides. Okay, now this pencil is pretty dull, so it would probably work, but I'm going to go ahead and use this carpentry pencil. Now, I've got this, and it's rounded off just the way I like it, but any fairly dull pencil, end of a mechanical pencil, back of a fairly thin paintbrush, anything like that would work. All we're going to do is now take straight edge. Now, you want to go into the into the foam. You actually want to make a groove in the foam, but you don't want to gouge it all the way through. You do want this to continue to be a solid object. So take that and I usually make two to three soft passes now sometimes you'll get this a little bit jagged which is fine we're looking for handmade shingles anyway so that's gonna be perfectly okay you want to take the other one and do the same thing I usually use the end of that one it, these don't have to match so this just has to get close but I basically use that as a gauge for where to put the other ones. Move that over. Hopefully I will remember to speed this up in post. <laughs> Shingles. You want to pick, make sure you keep track of which where your top and bottoms are. You want to pick either of them and use that as your starting point. On that one, you want to take the bottom row and make another gouge right in the center. Then you want to take one halfway from there to the end, and again half, and again half. You want these fairly deep. You want these to specifically show up after all of the paint is on. Okay, so we have approximately eight shingles across. The next layer up Oh, you want to copy that, skip a layer, and copy that. The next layer up, you want to be offset. So that's just like that, and you're going to end up with a little half shingle at the end here. You're going to have that at the top as well. So you're going to offset all of them. Now, on the opposite side, keep track of where your top is. On the opposite side, you want to go the same way, except you want to start from the top instead of the bottom. So on your top row, you want that in eight. And your second and bottom row, you want to be the ones with the little half shingle at the end. That way, when they're on the roof together, they're still offset. Okay, I'm gonna finish this out and then I'll come back and show you how to texture the tops. Okay, I find the easiest way to texture these is to use a combination of a plastic comb and a wire brush, and I'll show you what I mean with that. Take the comb, and up or down, doesn't matter, you wanna go on each row from the line to the next line. You don't really want these to line up all the way across, so you wanna lift it and move it a little each time. That's gonna give you some fairly deep marks. You can do that a second time if you want. Again, each line. Now that gives you the deep texture that you can see right here, I hope. I'm trying to show you that on camera, but I can't really see it very well. All right, then to give it more variation, you wanna take the wire brush and just sort of make small passes across it. You do not want this to particularly gouge into the foam. This is very, very light. This is just to break up 
the deeper texture so that there's a, a subtle texture and a, bla a blatant texture, a brazen texture. You can go either direction, but just make sure that all of these line up pretty much directly up and down with the foam, uh, with the uh, roof. Okay, so now that we've got those textured, we're going to take the two tops. That's the angled off piece here. We want to sit those against each other lined up. And we're back to our friend masking tape. And we'll lay that. And you want those fairly snug together. You essentially want them to hinge. Okay, so we've put masking tape on the roof. It's about time to take masking tape off of the body. It's okay if you tear it, we're about to cover that all up with hot, with hot glue and foam anyway. We want this to fit as close to this part to the point as possible. We want to make sure to keep these two edges lined up correctly. So we want to only glue one side of the top at first. We're going to make sure that this lines up when we put it on there. So hot glue again, pretty liberal dose. You don't really want this coming loose. This is the roof to your house. And then you want to take this and already fold it as if it's going to fit on the roof. You want to take that and push, smush it on there. You want to line up that center line and these two edges and make sure that you have that pushed into place where you want it. And then you can turn it inside out and really press it in so that the hot glue gets a good grab. And that's going to leave you with half the roof attached. So because we made this gap in here with the uh, angled undercuts, this will now need to be filled in just to make sure these stick together better. So just put the other half on, same deal, liberal amount of glue all over, all the way to the edges. And you want to run some along that edge on both the top, the whatever you consider the front and rear of the house. If you have any glue squish out to the side, it's not really going to matter. We are going to attach some eaves and ogre hangs in another uh, in another video, so that will all be covered up. But you can, if you want, peel that off at this time. So, with those two pressed on, that's the structure of the house. The house is essentially completed, but today we're still going to attach the chimney. Now that's going to be a little more complicated, so let me get the uh, the chimney piece and the tools we're going to use to make that, and I'll be right back to show you exactly how we're going to do that. All right, I've got ready what we need to make the chimney. I don't know if you can see it directly from that angle, but this house is about three and three quarter inches tall. So we're going to make the chimney about four and a half inches long. So we're going to take a piece of the standard half inch, the blue or pink foam, and we're going to cut that at four and a half inches. Now I'm going to eyeball this. The top, it's really not going to matter. It can be expected to be crooked. It's going to be a farmhouse. So I'm just going to eyeball this rather than using a straight edge. Now, that's going to be too wide for a chimney, but I made sure that we had a little extra here. Now, to scale on my builds is one quarter inch equals a foot. I want to have be able to have a four inch wide hearth, a four inch wide opening for my fireplace inside the house. So I need a four foot wide, excuse me. So I need to have six quarter inches wide, which is an inch and a half. So I want a, a one and a half inch width to this one. Now that's a bit longer cut. I'm gonna go ahead and use a straight edge on this one. You can go ahead and put both of these pieces of foam off to the side. They're not gonna be used again for this build. So this is our chimney. There's lettering on this one. You can sand that off or, or however you want to get rid of that. As it is, it doesn't come up above the roof line, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it, but I'm going to make sure that that is my toward the wall inside part. So that's going to be placed this way against the house. Now you want to take the house and essentially mark lightly, gently, where your roof line is going to meet this piece. or you can go and take this line and mark there. You just want, you don't have to texture the whole piece. You just want to make sure that on the interior part, you're texturing far enough down. So I've got that marked to there and there. All right, now here's where we get to the shaping of the piece. We can take this and take our sanding block again. 
You don't want these sharp, crisp edges on here. You want those to be rounded off. So I can just take those, make a couple of passes, and those get rounded off and they're gonna look great once we put the bricks in. That's got slightly rounded corners, which is gonna look great once it's finished. Again, this is gonna be our inside part that we don't have to uh, texture. Now, here is how I texture these. I take a pencil and I have pulled the eraser out. And I used a pair of needle nose pliers to turn this into a rectangle. I've pinched it and moved it and bent it. And that's going to be my bricks. Those make a pretty good in scale brick. You can make them larger using some paintbrushes in the same way. Pull out the bristles and paint and take this piece, this piece of metal. It's called a ferrule. You can change the ferrule shape on the paintbrushes. Usually they're oval, but you can make them rectangle for bigger bricks. But I like the way this one does this. So I'm going to use this size. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the top because the bottom can be lost into the dirt and be fine. So I'm going to start at the top in the middle and just press in and that's it. That's my first brick. And I'm going to do this like a hundred more times. I want to line up the edge of this one with the edge of that one. Now, coincidentally, this makes this piece just about five inch, five bricks across because that inch and a half to the width I've made my ferrule happens to line up just right. So that's my first row of bricks. So the next ones you want to offset just like a normal brick pattern. So now I've got four on that line. That's gonna leave me a half a brick here. Let me show you how to texture around the corners. That half brick is going to become a full brick on this side. So you wanna take line up to those same two lines right at the edge, full brick. full brick. The outside, you've got a full brick at the corner, but you want to put a half brick offset there, then a whole one in the middle, and then a half offset there. And that's going to give you your same pattern all the way down. Now you want to do this on the back, and again, you only need to do this down to the, those two, to the point you marked where the side of the building will be hiding it. You don't actually have to texture all of this. Now I will warn you, this is a little bit tedious and does start to hurt. I presses right here on my finger. I would suggest a band-aid so that the padding will help you get protected from it. Now I could go ahead and do all this on camera, but it's really boring and it's going to take a long time. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make all of these texture on this brick and I'll be right back. So I've got the chimney cut with all the bricks in. It's really gratifying to do. It's a complete bore and snore fest to watch somebody else do it, so I saved y'all from that. But here's my completed chimney. This messed up piece at the bottom, I'm gonna, that, I'm gonna leave the part where I started at one end and moved toward the other. There's a little bit messed up. I'm gonna leave that at the bottom. That's gonna get covered up with bushes or moss or something at the end of the whole build. Now this is an inch and a half wide. So pick one of the two gabled ends, it doesn't matter which. These are gonna be the sides of the house. This cardboard is approximately three and three quarter inches wide. All I'm doing is moving it over an eighth, and that gives me a nice clean middle line here at the uh, inch mark. Now, I want to go three quarters of the way out from that. Three quarters of an inch, not three quarters of the distance. Three quarters of an inch out and make a little line. Those are going to be the sides of my chimney. I am going to cop, I'm going to move that mark to the underside of the roof. And so you can see where I've made the marks, and I'm going to cut those part out those parts out so that the chimney will fit in there snugly against that so all you do is take your knife now you want to make sure to cut vertically in relation to the ground not straight across the the roof you want it to cut at the same angle as the roof angle is so I'm gonna follow that line just press until it hits the roof then sure that it's not very clear but I'll show you in just a moment okay now I've cut through that so I want to take both of those pieces out if there's any glue there that can go away as well I'm gonna straighten that up a little bit and the chimney is going to attach right there where we made that cut out at so want to make sure that this isn't crooked we want to get it as straight as possible all of this on the part where 
the roof meets, we want to get as close as possible. Rather than gouging into that with a pencil, which could eventually be visible, I want to line that up and take a couple of pieces of masking tape. And that's my glue line. Everything from there down gets hot glue. Probably don't want to actually glue your thumb like I just did. I guarantee you I'm burning myself right now. It hurts a lot. Don't do that. Now, while the glue is still hot, and trust me, it is, you want to take that, line it up on your roof line there, and press, keeping it aligned with the building. Flip it inside out. You can press down a little harder on there. I'm glad I use low temp and not high temp. If I'd had on high temp, woo! I'd have been saying words. Okay. And that's it. We're attached. Now, there is a bit of a gap here. Uh, you can fill that with glue. You can fill that with putty. You can fill it with moss after you're done. Um, we will take care of all of that at the end. But for now, we're essentially done with the part of the house. Now, there's two other things we've got to attach right now and or show right now there's a cap that's going to go on top of here and that's going to just be an off cut of the same foam core we want it the same half inch as the ooh, lucky me that's the right width as the chimney and the same length so we can use the chimney to get the length on that Oops. the width of the chimney is going to be the length of that cap now again, peel all the paper off, and we're going to be doing some more sanding here. You don't want these nice sharp edges on here, you want those rounded off, so just, oop, that's too, use the softer side of the sandpaper, and both edges, just round it off. And that's basically ready to go. Now, the next thing, this is going to have to have a place for the two chimney tops to stick out. So what you want to do is you want to find sort of the middle spot and you want to put the chimneys off to the side of that middle spot and I am positive you can't see this but okay so I made a little mark in the middle and I'm using the straw itself to not only mark but I'm spinning it and it's gonna cut through at that spot now you can use a drill or a knife or however you want to do it but I have found that if I'm just patient and I press on it the straw will cut all the way through and take out that little circle. Repeat for the second one. Now you've got the two circles. Now you want to take that piece and go ahead and it looks like you want to hot glue it, but we don't. We're going to paint it separately. So all of this is going to get a base coat and we're going to need the chimneys and we're going to need to paint them as well. Now the straw is going to be really smooth and paint's not going to want to stick to it. So again, I take it and I sort of run it and rotate it as I'm doing and rough up the end. Now you want to rough up at least an inch of the straw. You take the straw and you want to cut two half inch pieces off of there. Which apparently get a little springy and go shooting off to the side. But there you go. Two half inch pieces off of there. It does not matter if these two are exactly the same length. They only need to be close. They're not going to actually be touching each other, so they're going to look close enough. Plus, it's a peasant hovel anyway. So take these, and we're going to paint. We're going to now put a base coat on all this. Let me clear away all my other tools and come back with the paintbrushes, and I'll show you putting the base coat on. As I base coat everything, I use what's called my boom, which is half PVA glue and half paint. I've got a brown one, a green one, and a gray one for different things. So I'm using my brown boom, and I'm going to paint the entire house. What we do, make sure it shakes up because they do separate out from each other. Now on this, I'm going to be going back and forth to it, so I do want something to put the paint in. Uh, so let me go ahead and grab a bowl real quick. Alrighty, sorry about that. Maybe rinse water. You need a fairly good sized brush, but it doesn't need to be, you know, like you're not painting a real house here. So, just dip your brush in and you can start wherever you want. I generally just hold it from one corner and paint everything else. So, 
you do want to make sure to get into all of the nooks and crannies. So we're gonna go ahead and cover the entire house and then I'll show you what the next step is which has to do with texturing. Let's talk about brush strokes. Now I've got the entire house painted, it is still very wet. On the roof, you want to follow the lines of the tiles, or the uh, shingles, so that you get a nice clean wood grain look to those. So you, brush strokes aren't even gonna show here because you've already textured the roof. Now on the sides, you do not want brush strokes. So here on the bricks, you can make sure to get between there and push all the paint in. And then on the brick, a little bit. You don't have to do as much on the brick but you want this stippling motion on the brick to at least some extent. That gets rid of the brush strokes. Now on the sides of the house, you want to stipple everything. We're going for a waddle and daub or adobe or sandstone or, how, I mean, um, that's not the right word, but we're going for a granular texture on this. So we definitely don't want the brush strokes. So go ahead and stipple the entire thing. You'll notice that some of the original decal from the uh, mill carton is showing through. That is fine. This is not the last coat of paint, so there will be more to cover that up. So you don't want any kind of pattern while you're stippling. You just want the little smush marks everywhere. You don't want to look like you're going in a line or anything like that. Make sure to get up into the gables. Gable. One of them's covered by the chimney. Okay, and now, once that is textured with the stippling, you wanna take some sand. Now, I use just a regular contractor sand. It's got several different gr uh, grits to it. I do sift mine. I also use some that's not sifted, but this has been sifted through three different sizes of strainer, and this is very fine sand. You can also use uh, baking soda, but it doesn't come out with as much of a texture. You can also use uh, the refined um, playground sand but it's a little bit bigger than this so this is sort of in between the other two and you can if you get good with it you can take it and sort of use the I don't know if you can see that but I'm using the air pressure in the bottle to blow the sand on but you don't have to do that you can just sprinkle it on you don't want it just everywhere you want a model texture you do not want it on the roof your other alternative of course is just take a pile of it and sprinkle it on with your hands. Anything, any of those is fine. You don't really want it on the chimney and you don't really want it on the roof. This is a little bit delicate, but it turns out well in the end. And if you get a little on the chimney, it's not really gonna notice. Now, before you tip it and let it fall onto the chimney, you wanna tap that off. You don't need to paint the top or the bottom of the chimney. Those are gonna, one of them's just the bottom of the build so that it's gonna be hidden and the top is gonna to have that cap over it, which we're gonna paint in just a minute. That's it, tap it off, and the house is done for now. So we'll come back to that on my video next week. Sit that on another piece of cardboard to dry. Pick the one with the sand and sit it off to the side. It's fine. For, that's fine for now. I'll clean that. I'll retrieve that in a moment and take a different one. Now, for these other ones, the color I'm going to go for is a sort of yellow, like it's made from ground up sandstone. And the cap is going to actually be from that sandstone. So the colors I use for that are a very, very light yellow and a beige. And I mix them together 50 50. I don't know if you can see that. I seem to have gotten off camera there. Sorry about that. All right. Now, the only thing getting this 50-50 tan color right now is you'll see it again when we paint the chimney. But for right now, this 50-50 color, this is not at all a dry brush. This is actually painting. Now, we made that mark on there for the center. You want that to be the bottom. You don't even need to paint that side, but you do want the bottom edges. So we're gonna paint those and the sides. Now we definitely wanna get the top. All of that is getting this. Now this does dry a little more muted once it's dry. Um, paints are a lot of times, you wanna get in a hole just in case it shows up around the chimneys, the chimney stacks. 
you don't really want fingerprints on this, but it doesn't matter if you stipple this, brush marks, anything like that, it's all going to end up looking like a piece of stone on top of the house. So sit that over there with the house. We're going to take the chimney stacks. We're going to have to create a little thing for them. We're take those. Make a slight indent. We don't have to go all the way through on this one. Just enough to hold them in place. We're going to put the chimney stacks onto that. And it's okay if the bottoms don't get painted because they're going to be wedged down in this piece right here when we get to that. So these get the same brown. You know, you're going to be looking at me like, no, oh, why are you painting everything with that brown color? Well, that's just the brown base coat. The alternatives are green and gray. You could do any base coat you want, um, but I find that this one is, works fine because by the time I cover it with the other colors, you can't see the brown and the brown works as a perfectly fine base. No, no. You can see all my mistakes today. want to get the insides as well. Okay, then we leave those to get to dry. Now, that's it. We're done for now, and I'll see you in the next video. However, the chimney tops right here, at least on the outside of them, are going to need several more coats. So by the time I see you next time, these will have been repainted about three or four times. That's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you next time. We'll work on putting the second coat of paint and the doors and windows on the house. So, uh, once again, next time, we will paint over all the sand with the, with the final color. We'll paint the chimney in its color. We, we will paint the roof with some gray highlights, so that uh, dry brush, so that it shows off a different color, but they'll basically stay brown, and we'll attach doors and windows. So that's going to be in the next video, and then on the third video, we will be attaching uh, trim to the roof of the building, and uh, there's going to be a strip across the top of the building under the gables as well. And then for the fourth video, I will show you how to make a small platform for the house to sit on so that it becomes playable. It'll have its own base and look like it's built in, but you can just lift the, the house off of the top and leave a playable base. So I hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for coming to Campaign Terrain. Okay, so that's it. We're working toward this house. We've completed this much today. We started with these prototypes and this milk carton. And in section two, we're going to be starting to decorate this house. So come back when that, uh, for that one next week. For right now, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's given you some great pointers. And we'll see you next time on Campaign Terrain.